Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Keras Custom Starliner XL Fountain Pen. This is a special edition, um, but this will be the exact same as the normal base Starliner XL Fountain Pen. So if you're looking at one of those, hopefully this will help you out. We'll go over what I like about it, what I dislike, what I'm neutral towards. But before I'll do we do that, let's go ahead and get into a size comparison. Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Keras Custom Starliner XL Fountain Pen. But this is a newer design from Keras Customs, and while this particular colorway is a special edition, this is the um, Sunrise Edition, I believe it's called, they do offer this in four standard colors, which we'll go over in a little bit. But if you're looking at picking up one of those, hopefully this review will help you out. Let's go over what I like, what I'm neutral towards, what I dislike about this pen. But before we do all that, let's go ahead and jump into a size comparison. All right, so here it is next to the Pilot Metropolitan, the Lamy Safari, and the Keras Customs Decagraph. So just, you can see that despite being called the Starliner XL, this really isn't that big of a pen. It's actually fairly small. Um, it's not pocket size, but it's right there in between pocket size and normal size, I think. So yeah, you're losing about a, you know, probably close to a centimeter on uh, the Decagraph and Safari, and maybe half a centimeter on the Metropolitan. All right, and here the pen is uncapped, so you can see it's a little bit shorter than the Safari and the Metropolitan, but it's pretty fairly close in length to the Decagraph. The biggest thing you'll notice in, in the Decagraph um, is going to be the width. The Decagraph is much wider, much bulkier. This is a bit slimmer, um, fairly close to the Metropolitan in thickness in most aspects. All right, let's go ahead and go over what I like about this pen. So first up, nib and flow. Pen writes pretty well. Um, Bach nibs can be a little inconsistent, and I've had some issues from Keras Customs before. Um, not their fault. It's more Bach's fault. These nibs are kind of a crapshoot, which you know. Um, this one writes pretty well, though. I haven't had really any issues with it. I've had a few flow issues, but most of those were solved by just rinsing the pen out. So it's good to go now. So I think once you clean it, you shouldn't have too many problems. Next up is going to be the design. One, I, I love the orange and blue. I think that's where the sunrise thing comes from with the sky and the sun. But the design overall is pretty nice. Um, it's a very, very clean, um, it kind of drops down from the grip and then tapers and kind of goes back down. And you'll notice these rings here. These rings are fairly consistent. You have one ring, two rings in the center here, and then three rings on the end. So there's, there's a few nice little design nods and closed. This pen's fairly um, simplistic, but when you open it up, I think that orange adds a little bit to the design. It's uh, it's pretty nice. There are a few things I'm not a huge fan of, but I will point out real quick. Um, instead of it being a flat top and bottom, there's this little tiny cone, and I do mean tiny. It is very, very small, and that is on both ends of the pen. If I can get it to focus around the tiny little backside. Anyway, that's present on both sides. I kind of wish they'd go on the flat top myself, but it does add a bit more of a design to it. And, of course, they have their st standard uh, Keras Customs clip, which we will come back to. The weight on this pen is pretty good as well. Um, closed up, it's not particularly heavy, but it does have some heft to it. But when you uncap it, it's a pretty pleasant weight in the hand. Um, surprisingly, for the size, it, it's not super, super heavy. It's kind of in between the Safari and the Metropolitan, a bit more towards the Safari side of things, being an all-metal construction. But it is aluminum, which is a lot lighter than brass. And in the hand, it, it feels pretty good. Speaking of which, the section on this pen is very, very nice. Um, it's small, which I'm not normally a big fan of, but the taper on it really, really helps with the grip that, that kind of swell. So I can put one finger here and another finger back here. And for my hand, it works pretty well. I haven't had really any issues writing with this pen. I don't hate using this pen or anything like that. So the, the section really, really makes this a lot, lot better than it could have been. It, uh, if it had tapered down too much, kind of like the Metropolitan section, probably wouldn't have been a big fan of it. But this is, I think, a good size for a section. It's probably between, like, it's right around 8 to 9 millimeters, probably. So it is small, but that kind of, that swell helps out quite a bit. This is the first Keras Customs pen that I know of that uses a um, like a click cap instead of a screw down cap. So when you cap it, you get a very reassuring click sound. I like it a lot. And when you uncap it, you get the same thing. 
It's very, very pleasant sound. And it caps on very securely. There's no movement really this way. Um, there's some side to side, which we'll come back to. But for a first try, they executed this very, very well. It's a very secure capping. I'm not worried about it coming off. And that little clip gives a bit of a push off area so I can uncap it without any real issues. So it's a good enough pull to where it's not going to come loose, but it's not so strong you have to struggle. Also, speaking of the cap, the posting on this pin is very good. It posts very, very deeply. And because of how deeply it posts, the weight is pushed back a little bit, but it's not too bad. You could certainly use this posted. I'm not the biggest fan because the weight's a little bit far back for me. But if, if need be, you can certainly post this pin. And just to give you a frame of reference, it posts up to about there. So it's, you know, about, about half the pin length, honestly, goes into the cap, which is very, very impressive. I think the posting on this is probably one of my favorite things, just the option to do that. The threading on the section here is very nice as well. It's very, very smooth. It's very fine. I don't have any issues with the threads or screwing the body on. And I don't, I don't know, it's probably my favorite threading that they've ever done. Normally I wouldn't comment on that, but it's very, very pleasant on this pen. Now, let's talk about some stuff outside of the pen that I like. Um, first one up is going to be a packaging. It comes in this like retractable kind of container. It has these little click or little um, bumps that you can kind of use to click it into place. What I'm actually using it for at the moment is to store the cartridges that came with the pen. And I think this is a great option. It's, it's not the most beautiful packaging in the world, but practicality wise, I think it's very, very nice. You could very easily close this all the way down like this, toss some cartridges in there, a converter. Um, you could probably fit an ink sample actually in here if you wanted, um, just to give you that little bit more reassurance that it's not going to spill out. So it's nice that they included this. I can certainly see this being reusable. While it's not super, super durable, just to toss into a bag, I think it'd be a great option. And the last thing I like about this pen is the price. So this is uh, fairly inexpensive as far as like handmade, well not handmade, machined in America, you know, by a small company. This pen's only $55 um, for the base price. Now, if you want upgraded titanium or gold nib, it's going to be a little bit extra. But to be honest, for a machined aluminum fountain pen made in America, you know, it's it's pretty pretty good price. I'm, I'm happy with it. I jumped on this when I saw the price. I really thought it was going to be closer to 80 or 90 to be honest. And I don't think the pen would have been worth that since we're... You know, talking about price and everything, I don't think for $80, this eh, pen might have been pushing at $90, no. But $55, it's a good pen. Um, th as I mentioned, this colorway is limited, this blue and orange. They do have the standard in uh, silver body with a blue grip, silver body with a red grip, silver body with a silver grip, and all black. So if you like any of those colors, they do have those still available, and they'll probably do limited runs in the future as well. On to the neutral. First thing up, the size. This pen is small. I really wish it were bigger. Um, even though it's similar in length to the Decagraph, it feels substantially smaller than the Decagraph does. The Decagraph is probably my favorite, you know, one maybe not my favorite, but damn close to being my favorite pen to just have in my hand. It fits in very well. The width is nice. The weight is nice. And again, similar length, but it's just, I don't know. I think calling this pen the XL is a little misleading. I probably would have made this pen actually a, a good bit larger <laughs> or um, something. The standard Starliner fountain pen is not... Hmm. I would call it a pocket pen. It's four inches when it's capped. This one's five inches when it's capped. So you're losing about an inch of length there. That's that's pretty pocket pen size to me. So if you're looking for something something very small, probably go with that. This is almost normal fountain pen sized, and that's what gets me. It's almost there. It's not my favorite. It's still very, very usable. It really is. If you had smaller hands, I think this would be just fine for you. But for me, it's not quite where I want it. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Last thing, the clip. Um, these clips are stiff. They do work, which is why it's not in the bad, but they're stiff. The design, I know it's kind of like the Keras Custom signature kind of on their pen. They put that that clip on there, and you're like, oh, I know that's a Keras Custom. That's great and all, 
but I really think they could have come up with something a little bit better. I think if they just had a plain, you know, e even just an aluminum clip <clears throat> with, you know, that was anodized orange or something like that, I'm not sure how well an aluminum clip would work, but I think it would look nice. I, I don't know, this, this clip design is my least favorite thing about this pen. It's very industrial, or my least favorite design thing about this pen, let me rephrase that. It's very industrial, it's functional, but I'm not in love with the aesthetic that it's kind of giving off. On to the dislike. There's really only one thing here, and when I first got the pen, it wasn't present, but it has developed over time. There's a little bit of cap wiggle. I'll see if I can kind of show you this here. When you're holding the cap still, there's just a tiny bit of side-to-side -side play. You can kind of see it there. See if I can get zoomed in any closer. You can see it a little. You can hear it a lot better than you can see it, though. So that that wiggle's present. It's not horrible, but it's just a fit and finish thing that I, this pen would have felt much, much better if the wiggle had been fixed. But overall, it's, you know, pretty good pen. So let's go ahead and go to a writing sample, and then we'll give you a conclusion. All right, this is the Kara's Custom. Customs. I always mess that up. Kara's Customs. Starliner XL. I'm not even going to try my handwriting today. I'm just going to let it be bad. I don't feel like it. Um, this is a broad nib. In case you're wondering, it honestly writes a bit like a medium. Maybe kind of in between a medium and a broad. One thing that did surprise me, though, is you can get quite a bit of line variation out of this out of this nib. I, I don't know why. <laughs> it's kind of random, to be honest. But I can definitely get some line variation out of it. It's interesting, to say the least. But it is present. If you're wanting a little bit of line variation, maybe go with a broad. I don't know, maybe the other ones are somewhat flexible as well. This was not the case, um, I don't believe, on my Keras Customs Fountain K that I used to have. I think the nib was a bit more rigid on that one. But the flow is very good, very wet, there's no hard starts or anything like that, which you see, had this pen uncapped for the last 10 minutes or so on and off, and no drying issues, no hard starting, wrote just fine. So it's a, it's a pretty good writer, and the nib performs pretty well. Alright, on to the conclusion. So just to wrap it up, this pen is a very good value in my opinion. It's not the best, it's not a Twisby or anything crazy like that, but it's pretty good. Um, I, I think the price is good, the work is good, the fit and finish is pretty good, except for that cap wiggle. If you're looking for a, maybe not necessarily a smaller pen, a little bit smaller, but a slimmer pen, I think this is a really good option. If you're looking for something altogether smaller, probably try out the Starliner. I haven't got my hands on it yet, but I'm assuming it's a little bit tinier. They also offer this in a rollerball, if you're into that. Um, but this pen's pretty good. If you can find it in a color that you like, and you can pick it up. It's a pretty good price. I really don't have too much bad to say about it. If you're looking into one, definitely try it out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Feel free to check out my other stuff. And if you feel like it, subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.